This is Jay and welcome to Sneak Peek. Today with me, I have JB from Webflow, who's gonna show us how designers at Webflow organize their Figma files. JB, super stoked to have you on Sneak Peek. Hey Jay, glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. So as an experienced designer, how do you organize your Figma files? Yeah, so at Webflow, the typical way that we organize our Figma files is basically we're gonna have these separate sections. The at the top, I'll kind of start here, ready for dev. So when we finalize files, this is where everything is gonna live. But if I kind of start down at the bottom, explorations is where everything sort of starts. And you'll see here that I have them by date. Most things are dated. But this is why why do you do that? The dates are just helpful. Yeah, the dates are helpful as a reference point. I kind of work in like maybe these weekly cycles. And once you start to explore and look at a bunch of divergent solutions and your page maybe gets a little bit like overwhelming, you maybe have too many things in there and you start want to break those things up between by week by week as you're exploring things and going through these like iteration cycles, it's just more helpful to break that between these pages versus having everything dumped in one canvas. So you don't have to like have to go hunting for things. You can of course do your types of your organization and sometimes you can label them if there's certain themes that kind of like bubble up from each of these pages so that you can quickly find things. But of course within those, you can use things like the sections as well to start organizing these canvases even further. Wow, I freaking love it. So we've got the explorations. I'm not sure if you can click on any of them or get like a sneak peek of any of the contents. Yeah, I can dive into one of them. This one here is like an exploration I was doing on like tooltips. Right now I have like all the annotations up, but essentially for this specific feature for CMS collection access, it's like we were trying to represent like how tooltips show up when you hover over one of those chips, but basically just going really wide and like looking at different variations and what would be the most like digestible and like consumable way to absorb this information. I'll give you an A plus for organization because if you zoom into your names, like tooltip with icon plus, everywhere, like every iteration, you have named it in a way to make it very easy to understand what's the difference. Like what made you do all this? Like you've just been like one, two, three, four, two. Right, I could. I think this is mainly for me, though I could do one, two, three, four, two. After like a couple of weeks and I wanna go back to this, I actually want to understand even what I did and actually just be able to like reference quickly. Oh, this is like this type of iteration. And here's like the sort of unique things about this one versus the other one. You can grok visually maybe some of the, what the differences are, but there's usually just some additional context that's helpful if you just like name the frame or add some sort of like note or something like that to just anchor a little bit better. Wow. Every single thing, the way you organize, I'm just so curious to learn all of that. Like I, this is the explorations. Then as we go up on the left side pane, you will got a separate section for prototypes, which to me is interesting. Like why, what made you create a separate section for the prototypes? So there's actually nothing in this section currently. These are just like the top headers for the sections themselves. We have them by dividers, but Sometimes what will happen is like I'll have, I go to the specs file, for example, which this used to be a prototype. So it was actually here and I could have probably just copied it, but I sometimes these files get so big as you kind of have so many explorations that you want to save some space. So this used to actually be the prototype and I had it here, but as it became a source of truth or the main sort of working file, it graduated to become like the prototype and the specs file, which is like the final handoff file that I give to developers. And we walk through basically this, this experience together. Usually I'll have things in the prototype section and they'll like move in and out of it. But it's mainly before we get to the specs part where things are ready for development, they live in that sort of prototype world. Maybe they, there are share outs for design reviews, but I also have other prototypes in design review presentations as well. So they flux in and out of that section. And then right here as part of this prototype and specs file that you give for handoff, I noticed that you have an entire kind of like a user flow there because I see step one, step two in the naming of it. Yeah, that's right. I make heavy use of like sections. So we're using this top level section here and we actually start with basically the jobs to be done. And this is basically like the that helps PMs, developers to navigate this file. The more you add these sort of like types of guiding parts of the canvas, because this is like a, for designers, it's easy to, when you're working on your own file, you know where everything is. But when someone else is coming up in here, I think it's helpful to have something like this, especially with presentations. When we have 
prototype mode, for example, you can start with something like this, kind of state what the main focus of this specific flow is, what the actual job to be done is, what's included in beta, and also just basically break that down by these different sections. Like up here, have another section for the main components that are maybe used throughout this flow. But this has just been helpful as an organization layer to say, here are your components, here are the main things that get reused across this thing, and then here are the flow. And this is also like where all the prototypes live. So it's like this all-in-one specs design review file as well that can actually evolve from this, right? We start with the prototype, we become a design review file, but then also it just graduates to the specs. It's a, just like the process evolves with the design itself, the actual the workflow and what you're doing, the files themselves and the pages are also evolving. Even for that add a new user to site, what we are, if you zoom into that, the screenshots that you put there, not the screenshots, but the designs, when I look at the naming of that, it's SSA step one, then there's like SSA step two. So even there, you've had this naming that explains to someone what the different steps are. I'm mind blown, like, how was people want to do this level of detail? You know, naming your frames, I know there's like a hot topic in Figma land, maybe not so much anymore, but... As much as possible, just have things be coherent so you can like basically follow along. And also these are helpful labels for definitely, again, for PMs, collaborators, anyone who's jumping in here to understand what's going on. Because unfortunately, like this is, you can't just jump into the prototype and live at the static file layer, like the mock layer and just browse through. It's easier just to follow along. Got it. Any other unique organization tactics that you would like to share? Another... Thing is like kind of interactions, though you can just use the prototype, especially for working with devs when you're trying to communicate certain interactions, having like certain screenshots that I, these are actually screenshots I took from the prototype, just making it super clear what the expectation is when you're talking about certain interactions. Like for example, here, if the one of the tags here are is disabled, I'm also like wanting the mouse to actually show this disabled kind of version of it and then also show that hey, this site manager role, when they have full access, you basically can't change their access. We, we're making this tag not interactable. So just like adding like those little kind of notes and making sure things are super clear. How does it benefit the stakeholders? Because you could also say that I don't have to like, because it probably took you a couple more minutes to take a screenshot, put it there. You could also just assume that the engineer will figure it out because you've given them the prototype link. Yeah, it's... Being like as detailed as possible, even when it feels like it's unnecessary and over communicating things, I've found generally has been more helpful when working and collaborating with cross-functional partners. Anything that I can do and I go like the extra mile to add some extra level of detail or just clarification on things, I think is always going to be a net benefit because, hey, like we're working remotely. Our team is Webflow is primarily distributed and everyone's remote mostly. So things, if we're not in a live call to be able to just explain things, we try to do that as much as possible. But async, when someone's like working, like maybe in hours that are like not the same as yours and maybe, like, hey, I'm, maybe I'm out for the day. Developer might be working on this like a little bit after I'm gone. I think those, having those extra level of detail just like brings extra clarity to these artifacts. Um, and not just those, there's also, I just toggled on the annotate, but I like to do a lot of that as well. So these oh. are all just like annotation notes that like talks about the rules of like when to display this overflow thing based on how many items are in this list. So again, like this is just another level of detail and just being extra clear about what the expectation is around the, the interactions and the behaviors that you want to see. Mind blowing. Do you feel that for someone to become a senior designer, this level of organization is table stakes, is it necessary? I think to some degree, I think the main goal, so I think there's many different ways to do, to organize basically your file, your canvas. The main goal is to be able to actually clarify and make the intent well understood. So whatever that looks like for your team. So I think this level here specifically is really good. And different folks on our team do things very differently. Like I'm a heavy user of the annotations because it's like native and built in. Uh, but we also have these these notes basically that also you can just like use. So these like annotation stickies, which are components. So you can use these as well and you can change them with different colors and you can use those. I just kind of use it annotation. So other designers are also using the notes. This is built, made by our design systems and our designers on our team as well. So there's different ways to do the same thing. So not exactly, I think, 
what I'm doing here. But I think to some degree, you need to have some level of clarity and maybe not even as verbose. A lot of these are repeated here, but I just like copy and paste. I'm like, okay, change what's relevant or irrelevant for this specific one. So I would say that it depends, but just make sure there is, it is super clear to someone coming in to this for the first time, like to, that they have all the context that they need to basically understand what's going on and be able to build it. Got it. Thank you so much, Jamie, for sharing with us how you organize your Figma file. Yeah. Hey, this is Jay. It means the world to me that you watch this video. If you want to unlock the AI design and growth to design interviews with designers at some of the top companies in the world, then head on over to sneakpeek.design and subscribe to the newsletter.